So I have a set of WRX headlights. These are aftermarket, they're Depot brand. They can go on almost any WRX out there, except there's one trim level that has a different plug. It's called the Sport Tech. It's got more pins on the actual headlight connector than these ones do or than most of them do on the road. But here's the problem. I'm building some really custom lights for a car that was in an accident that's a Sport Tech. And so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna take the Sport Tech wire harness, we're gonna integrate it with these custom lights. You could do this with factory lights, like if you've got some HID lights that are gonna go on the halogen version of that car. Sometimes they have different plug issues, sometimes it's just repinning things. But in this case, it's a fully different wire harness. So I'm gonna show you side by side the harness that came with the depot lights as well as the ones that came off the Sport Tech from Subaru. I hope that you don't have to do this very often. So this is a setup that normally it comes with just a halogen projector and bulb. And in this case, what we've done is put in a bi-xenon projector. So it does high beam and it does low beam, which is all fine and good. It's this unit right here, super, super nice. Comes highly recommended. I guess that's a G5. I've got the harness that's on here right now it is absolutely basic. We've got running lights on the side there, and then we've got a connection for the high beam. And that's basically it. Pretty straightforward where we'll just hook up these Hilux ballasts and that's what will power the bulbs. And then everything should be good as long as we can plug it into the car at the factory connector right there. But the big twist is we're not gonna use that plug. We're gonna use the plug that came on the Sport Tech. So it's this guy, totally different plug. It also has these little uh, headlight projector adjustment motors and we don't have that on these original lights at all this harness is basically going to get completely chopped down to try to work at least this part will make it plug in place so that we're not doing any sort of like splicing from this connector and then having a bunch of different stuff that doesn't actually plug into his car we're going to make it as pain painless as possible for him so that we can have all of these things in there and then last but not least the crazy sequential RGB gill high beam delete awesomeness. Since I don't specialize in Subarus and WRXs and all that stuff, I reached out to a guy who does. So make sure hit up SinisterRetroWorks.com. Check out his website. Check out his work. This goodness is what actually came off the customer's wrecked headlights. I'm gonna try to straighten this thing out and show you what we got. So first off, I can tell you right now, instead of a 12 pin maximum, this is a 16 pin connector. It's four by four, the other was four by three. That's not gonna work if you're gonna be plugging something like that in. The other thing I can tell you is the other harness was 100% exterior, but here we've got this little grommet. That means that everything on this side of the grommet is on the outside of the light. and Everything on this side of the grommet, which as you can tell is quite a lot, is inside the light. And then we've got this bad boy. Check this out. This is a special control unit for the headlights so that as you turn the wheel to the left, it aims the headlights that way. It aims the projector that way. Turn the wheel to the right, it aims them that way, right? So this is something that you would never find on the halogen version because it doesn't have that functionality. And so if the car doesn't see that this module is there, it's gonna throw a light. My customer didn't wanna have that. So what he did, he sent me this whole harness with all these little connectors and he wants me to integrate that into lights that only came with these six wires so that they can be easy to hook up, plug right onto the car and work perfect. That's gonna be a big challenge. So to start with, I wanna talk about what has been changed. We no longer have a high beam section. We have a new projector that does high beam and low beam in there, which means that we have wires coming out the back of the light to control the high beam solenoid inside that low beam projector. That means there's already gonna be a low beam on that's HID, and then we hit the high beams, a little window is gonna flip down inside of that light, and that is gonna be a low beam that becomes a high beam. And then we've also got some RGB stuff that turns these gills colors and also turns that angel eye ring colors. 
We also have a sequential parking light as well as sequential turn signals built into this C bar. And then there was originally a light that powered up. So all of that has been changed and coming out the back of the light, this is where we're at. I'll we'll talk about what we got going. This is gonna go to our wire harness for the ghost module. So when I make the full custom wire harness, it's gonna have four wires that are attached to this part as well as attached to the other light that's gonna supply power and ground to the ghost module as well as give a signal for show mode one and show mode two. We have a remote control that has four channels open. So if we want, we can basically hook up channel one to show mode one, two to show mode two, and then three, we're actually gonna hook it up to an XK Chrome RGB controller. So you'll have three things that you can turn on with the push of one button, making these super functional and easy to show off. All right, now luckily my boy Jay at Sinister Retroworks sent me a diagram. I'm gonna show you what that looks like on here. And what it's telling me is what all of these wires do. I wanna let you know about two different things. First off, I do have longer versions of my YouTube videos that have a lot of the stuff that I trim out because it's too technical. It's too nerdy and hardcore. So if you want, you can get access to that for free on my website, or you can get access to it by becoming a member here on YouTube. And the other thing is a video like this has hours worth of footage that there's no way I could put on YouTube because it's super boring, but it's super informative. That is why I make online courses for the people that really just want to know exactly wire by wire, all the different things that I did with all my weird commentary in the background as I sit and work and build these crazy lights. That's available as well on a paid version of my online training. So having said that, I'm about to show you the end result of these awesome lights. I'm just going to hook them up right here. Huge, huge thanks to my guy, Adam Nash. We actually have a video of when I quoted him. Adam ended up paying for that invoice. I made a video all about how you can create your own invoices if you're a builder. So that's available. Reach out, comment below. I will make sure that you get access to that on my website. And also Jay at Sinister. I mean, I think that's like the eighth time I've said his name in this video. My guy helps me out so much. And also FJ Films for providing that footage of Jay's work. It was beautiful. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Thank you.